getting perfect print results from your Ender 3 V3 from proper installation. For the last few years, we have been installing Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 version 1s and other printers. So let's see what's the difference in the Ender 3 V3. The first thing out of box is this installation guide, a nozzle cleaner and this sticker pack from Creality. It is quite cool, uh, maybe I'll stick it on my laptop. Next is the most important pack with all the filaments, the tools and the parts needed to complete the assembly of this printer. Creality included 20 meters of the PLA filament, 6 pieces of M3 times 14 screws, filament cutting plier which is a blue in color and this version is slightly darker blue comparing to the previous ones. Toolkit pack with wrench, allen key and screwdriver. One pair of M5 x 8 screws. And then another pair of M3 x 8 and M4 x 10. FCC fixing clip and a spare nozzle over here. And lastly, a storage card with a USB card reader. The Ender 3 V3 uses the standard size SD card, which is easier to get, cheaper and you don't lose it. Next up, out of the box, you have that display screen. So basically, this one comes with a bracket. Remove the bracket first. To make installation easier, we will check the steps out later on. Next is the power cables. These are UK 3-pin plug. Well, Malaysia uses this. And the last item from the top foam tray is this filament spool holder. Well, we won't be using this as we have our filament dryer box. And we also did a video on how to install a filament guide. In the bottom foam tray, we have this pre-installed gantry frame which has the x-axis all pre-installed already together with the hot end and also the extruder. Creality did this to reduce installation time and to make sure that installation is precise. And the last part of course is the base component itself which is secured with a lot of foams and cardboard which I like it very much because it makes sure that the bottom base is well protected. These are all the components laid out. Now we can proceed to assembly. However, there are two more foams that are protecting the bed. Let's remove them as well. I like this quick installation guide. It is actually quite detailed and the steps are clear. However, some users say that the fonts are too small. You can always download the PDF version from the website and find it in the SD card as well. Creality really kept the assembly down to the minimum. There's only like a maximum of five major steps. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to not miss it or not making any mistakes. Let's get started. In any Ender 3, the first thing I always make sure is just to check the bed itself. Well, this one came with a very nice build plate. And of course, it's magnetic and it's very easy to install to make sure that it's in the right place. So firstly, let's check on the belt to make sure that it's tight. So this factory pre-install is actually in a good tension. If not, we can always just adjust the screw behind. I got distracted with this nozzle cleaner because I realized that it is not pointy and uh, the size is a little bit big so this one is actually to clean the extruder part of the nozzle by pushing it in to clear off any stuck filaments inside and if you want to clean the nozzle you still have to use those nozzle needle let's inspect the base well for this and the 3v3 it comes with these two slots for the gantry to go in and it is directional so you make sure that it goes into the right place and it does help to make sure that the gantry is straight and squared however not quite we will show you later on place the gantry over the slots make sure that you clear off all the cables and the cables should be behind the gantry and not in front to make sure that it's not stuck later on do make sure that the gantry is sitting firmly into the slot and uh, next we'll proceed with installing the two screws on the rear first which is different from the installation guide we will need this pair of m3 x 8 screws it just comes with a pair like this and we just hand tighten this for now the reason why we do this step first is so that when we move the base around the gantry will not fall off now lift the printer up basically we want to get access to the bottom base to secure the base with this m3 x 14 screws there are six pieces of it so firstly we just tighten it not too tight first just make sure that all three are firmly tightened up but not to the tightest and then we flip it over to do the other three the reason why we don't tighten it yet is so that we can double check on the squareness of the gantry i use this square tool as i always use in the other printers as well and you can see here that it is not really very squared or not really very straight 
The reason is with this pair of M3 x 8 screw, so we need to untighten it slightly. So just now we just hand tighten it, but now after installing the gantry screws, it became tighter. Double check with the L square again, and since now it's straight, we can proceed to tighten down all the six screws at the bottom of the base. Tighten it firmly and do not put extra force as some users had accidentally stripped off the thread from it. Double check using the L square again, this time from the bed itself to make sure that it's totally squared from the gantry. This will make sure that the printer is now all squared and your print will be precise and totally squared and straight when you print it out. We double check again with the base and this time all of it is squared and true. Next is to install the display. This one we use this pack of screws, three pieces of M4 x 10. This is visually where it's gonna sit. To make installation easier, just remove the screen from the bracket. And with that, we need to flip up the base to make the installation easier. So put in the screws in one of the holes first, I like the furthest and the deepest one. And then put it up onto the base and tighten that up. And once it's done, you can do the same to the rest of the two screws. Identify the notch in the display wiring, press it in firmly and attach the screen to the bracket. It is easier to actually attach the screen to the bracket first before installing the wiring, but I make it so that it's easier for you to see. Tuck the cables nicely to make it away from the base. Next is the Z-axis motor, making sure that the notch is facing upwards as it is directional and press it in firmly. Tidy up the cables a bit so that it is not interfering with the bed. And over here, since it's out of the box, the bed's cable itself is actually rubbing along this cable. So just need to massage the cable a bit so that it is arcing outwards. And with that, we make sure that all the cables are not rubbing against each other. The large piece of cable here, the white one is for the X-axis motor and the black one is for the extruder. Make sure that the cable is coming from behind the gantry so that you don't get stuck later on. Open up the clips outwards for the FFC fixing clip assembly and now you can insert the whole FFC assembly into the clip. The clips will close when you insert the adapter in, if not just make sure that it's locked in. This small package includes a spare nozzle with the FFC assembly clip. So with this clip, there's two screws that you need to fasten to hold the entire cable assembly down. As this is quite small, I struggle a little bit with my big hands, but eventually I got them tightened down. The final connector will be this white one, which is for the X-axis motor. Again, double check on the direction. This time, the notch is facing downwards. Press it in firmly, and now the last part is to have these wires clip in into the wire harness holder. I find it easier to shape the wire harness into a U shape, insert the bottom one first and then the top and then slowly nudge them into place. Finally, check the print head so that it's moving without any obstructions. This is the spool holder, although I'm not really using this one, but for this assembly guide, let me show you how to put it on. Make sure that the spool holder is facing the back and then just tighten the two screws that are on top. For users with dry filament box, you can print a bracket to install it up here or this filament guide that you can check it out in our video. Next is to check the print head if it's moving uh, perfectly on the x-axis. Mine came from the factory with a little bit of stuck over here in this area. So we just need to uh, loosen the eccentric nut which is only available on the bottom part of the roller and then try it again and then tighten it a little bit more. The eccentric nut works in both directions so you just need to try an error and then test it again until you get the print head smooth. And if the print head is skipping during print, you can actually tighten the belt by using this screw over here. You can feel the tension on the belt and once it's tight, it is done. I will also check to make sure that the x-axis itself is squared so we can gently move up the entire gantry. Use the square or any object that is not taller than uh, 20 cm. You can test the height by pressing the gantry down and hit it and then check it on both ends. So mine was installed perfectly from the factory. If not, you can make some adjustment to the lead screw. Finally, before turning on, make sure that the power selector is selected correctly, 230 for UK and Malaysia. 
The warning is also paste on this screen protector. So peeling this off is always very satisfying. And with that, powering up and now our printer is alive. The first step on the screen is to select your language. If you select it wrong, you can always just go back into the menu to reselect it again. And after that, follow the instructions for you to heat up the nozzle, insert the filament, and it will do the bait leveling for the first time. And after it's done, we will be able to print perfect prints out from this printer. Insert the SD card and then we can start our first print. I will always test the first print with this bait level testing and seems like it prints out perfectly. As you can see here, it is flawless. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and comment if you want to see more from us. Thank you.